You oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. This is like the equivalent of a baby's first steps. Hey guys, it's Jasmine and that was Puppy and Alfred. And I feel like it has been forever since I filmed one of these for you guys because it kind of has. It's been like a month. So happy 2020. Today's video, I'm so excited to finally bring you guys. If you're new here, my two cats are Puppy and Alfred. And Alfred is fairly new to the family. His one year adoptiversary was just last week. And ever since I've introduced Alfred on the channel, you guys have been asking how I went about introducing him to the household and really how I introduced him and Puppy, especially considering they have such a good relationship with each other, as you've seen in tons and tons of videos that I've posted of them playing and just peacefully cohabitating and grooming each other and all of the good, lovey, kitty brother things. And I'm excited to share the process that I took in introducing them with you guys because I would have to say that it went pretty successfully. Not only do they get along great now, but the process went by fairly quickly in their case. It does require patience and time. And so I finally went through all of my footage and all of the notes that I took way back when, about a year ago, when going through this process and compiled it for you guys to come up with the four phases of introducing your cats. And a teeny disclaimer, the footage that you're going to see was from shortly after I moved into a new house. And so that's why it looks a little bit messy in the background. And by the way, along with most of the stuff that you'll find on the Cat Stuff video playlist here on YouTube, which is also at catladyfitness.com slash videos, the information in this video is also going to be a part of my upcoming book for cat ladies and cat lords and anybody who wants to learn some tidbits, guidance, and advice on how to have the healthiest, happiest house lion that you can. Initially, it was just going to be about raw cat food, but I decided to make it just like a really fulfilling book that can help you guys with all kinds of stuff, all according to my experience and research and all that. But nevertheless, I hope you guys do end up finding it very valuable because I'm having a pretty good time putting it together for you. So stay tuned for that. And before we get into it, by the way, if you are new here, welcome. If you like things having to do with cat stuff, especially kitty nutrition and raw cat food or information like what's in today's video or even things for humans like stress management tips and recipes and workouts and honestly whatever else I feel like posting. Then join the Cat Lady Fitness family and click that subscribe button below or if you're watching this on Facebook then you can always like our page or follow our page Cat Lady Fitness. All right, guys, before we get into it, let's just get any potential interruptions out of the way and suggest that if YouTube wants to put an ad in this video, please do so right about now. So here is the process that I took in introducing Puppy and Alfred. And if you want to learn more about them, definitely check out the Cat Stuff playlist. But Puppy is my established cat. He is now 11 years old, and I've had him for about five years. And Alfred, I rescued from the Humane Society uh, about a year ago, and Alfred is now about six years old. So the number one thing that you want to do before you bring your new cat home is to designate a room, ideally, or an area that you can shut off to be that cat's home base. For me, I used a spare bedroom that I actually use as an office. And you want to make sure that you put in the essentials for the new cat before he or she gets there. So you want to include a litter box filled with your litter of choice. You want to make sure that you have a food and water bowl accessible in that room. And you also want to set it up with some kind of bedding or a cat bed or even, you know, a couple little cardboard boxes, a couple of new toys. And this is really the only preparation step before getting into the four phases. And again, I'm calling them phases and not giving them a designated length of time because it is so individual. For some people, this entire process from phase one to phase four might take a week or two, like it did in our case. 
for other people, your cats may take up to a couple of months to go through all of the phases. So when you go to pick up your new cat, make sure that you are bringing them in in a closed carrier, ideally with a blanket or a towel covering the front gate part of it, and anywhere where you can get visual contact with your new cat. And when you bring your new kitty inside your home, you want to go straight into their designated room and you want to shut the door. You don't want your established cat to have any kind of visual contact. More than likely, your new cat is going to be meowing from inside the carrier, which will get your established cat curious right away. But make sure there is no visual contact. You walk in your front door, straight into the designated room, shut that door, and that's when you can let your new cat out of the carrier. This is when what I call phase one, the scent and safety phase begins. And why is it called scent and safety phase? Because that is what this phase is based off of the scent of each cat and getting used to each other's scents and getting used to each other's scents on you as kind of the the mutual lovey being, as well as providing and ensuring that feeling of safety, both in the new cat who's in a completely new environment and also for your established cat who may need that reassurance that everything's okay. This is just a new weird transition slash addition to their life. So scent and safety are key in phase one. During this phase, you want to make sure that you're spending enough time with both cats. And what I would do with Alfred and Puppy is I would make sure to come into the room and spend an ample amount of time with Alfred to give him the love that he wanted because he is a super cuddly, lovey, affectionate cat, and then immediately go out into the living room or the rest of the house and make sure that I pet and loved on puppy, that I gave him a couple of treats, and especially made sure that he got close enough to me to where he can smell Alfred's scent and vice versa. And for example, I made sure to get puppy a new toy that he loved. It's this purple purring furry cat toy. And I'll make sure to link everything I talk about in the description below because most things I got off of Amazon. I would also do scent swapping in items. So for example, I would leave a towel in the room with Alfred that he would lay on or sleep on, or I would even rub it all over him. And then I would bring it out to puppy's area. And again, vice versa. I would bring one of puppy's blankets or rub an old t-shirt all over puppy. And then I'd bring it into the room, even though in all honesty, puppy scent was all over the room as is because he has free reign of the house. Now the key here is to keep that door shut to the room. There should be no visual contact in phase one, but when you know to transition to phase two is basically navigated by your established cat. When puppy was getting closer and closer to the door, when he seemed more comfortable, when he started to sniff by the door, sometimes they would meow to each other from either sides of the door. And again, this is without any visual contact. The temperament of your new cat is really mainly going to be curious. It might be a little bit scared depending on their personality and, you know, the experience they're coming from, but it's more of a curious temperament, whereas your established cat is, I would say, more skeptical. So when you notice that that skepticism from your established cat kind of seems to transition into more of a relaxed kind of curiosity as they approach the door, I would say that that might be a good time to then move on to transitioning to phase two. And remember, you don't want to rush it, but there are some ways to help the process move along more smoothly. For example, you can bring treats closer and closer to the door for either cat. If you feel like they're kind of holding back and seem a little fearful, you can lure them with treats until they get closer and closer to where they're both right at each side of the door. Ideally, that's where you want to move on is when they're both right up against the door or at least feel comfortable getting that close to the door. And another suggestion I've heard is to put their food plates closer and closer to the door so that they can associate this happy, amazing mealtime with whatever is on the other side of the door and with the scent of the creature that's on the other side of the door. 
this I feel like might work well for the new cat because this is in a completely new environment where they are going to eat wherever you put the food bowl. But it wasn't that successful in our case because puppy has a designated eating spot that was in the kitchen on the other side of the house. So for me to try and move his food dish during meal times that much of a distance and to that different of a place didn't seem to work in his case. He just didn't really find any interest in it. It was a little bit too big of a shift and a change. But even despite that, we still were really, really successful, as you'll see. Now, the very last step to phase one would be site swapping. And for this, you still don't want the cats to visually see each other, but you want to exactly what it sounds like. Put your established cat in the new cat's designated room with the door shut and allow the new cat to come out into the rest of the house and explore. And a lot of this is super duper helpful if you have two people or if you have a friend or a partner who can help you with this process, but it's absolutely possible to do on your own. What I did was I took Alfred into the bathroom and shut the door, and then my friend took Puppy into the designated room for Alfred, shut the door. And when he had the door shut, he told me I just opened the bathroom door and I let Alfred down and let him kind of explore. And we did this for maybe about five to 10 minutes before Puppy, again, we're going by the established cat for most of this. Puppy was ready to, you know, after he sniffed around and kind of hopefully fed his curiosity in Alfred's room, Puppy just started kind of like scratching at the door to get out because... We all know cats don't like shut doors in general, but it did allow us five to 10 minutes to do the site swapping. So to transition into phase two, once both cats were close enough to the door and felt comfortable getting close to the door and were meowing at each other and even pawing at each other under the door, I cracked the door open just barely to where they barely, barely had any visual contact with one another and I can't remember if I filmed it. If I did, I'll put it in right about here. But I barely opened the door and let them kind of get a many, many peek at each other. And I've since learned that Alfred is very vocal. He meows at everything. He meows to himself. He, he meows to, I don't know, ghosts that I cannot see. But Puppy is a very silent cat. So his reaction is typically just staring into Alfred in this case. And I believe that he did after first seeing him for for a few seconds, let out a little hiss and walk away. And when that happens, that's when you just want to shut the door. And again, you're letting your established cat kind of navigate the pace at which things go. So you can try that again. And this even transitional part can last a couple of days, but you kind of want to crack that door open until they really start sniffing until maybe even if there is a tiny little hiss, it's a while before it happens. And that's when I felt comfortable to move on to what I call phase two, which is the visual contact phase. So you are going to need a couple of things for this phase. And in my case, I used a baby gate that I borrowed from somebody that I knew and just a regular old bed sheet, or you can use a thin blanket or a large towel. So at this point, the door is open to the new cat's designated room and the rest of the house or wherever the established cat is. And you want to put your baby gate up against the door, make sure that it's stable, that it's not going to fall over. And then you want to drape your sheet or whatever you're using over it completely to where it covers the entire gate. So there's still no visual contact at this point. Now from here, you want to very, very slowly lift that sheet inch by inch to then start the visual contact between the two cats between this gate. And again, you can positively affirm what's happening by incorporating treats, by incorporating uh, maybe a favorite toy, by putting it closer to the gate if your cats are hesitant to get close to that gate. But I'll put a clip in here of the very first time that Puppy and Alfred saw each other and about how high the sheet was lifted and the reaction so you can see what a typical reaction may be.
So this was pretty much what I expected. And I ended up keeping the sheet up, as you can see, uh, for the rest of the day. And in our case, again, all four phases seem to progress pretty quickly because I believe I was in this phase with the sheet and the baby gate for maybe one or two days total and started this phase on day two or three. And you can see, again, you want to go by your cat's body language and you can see that puppy would feel safe enough to sit and rest near the gate with his back to the gate and he seemed super relaxed. He didn't seem tense at all. So this was a really, really good sign. Same thing with Alfred. They're both relaxed. They're both not anxious. They're both not super skeptical. Basically, they both seemed very, very comfortable. And along with that, had some curiosity, especially when they were provoked a little bit, which is what leads us into phase three. But before that, I want to mention that this would also be a good time if you wanted to implement some pheromone plugins like uh, Feli Way, or I think that's how you pronounce it. But they also have Amazon brand pheromone plugins for cats that can be really, really helpful. They might help to just naturally, inherently ease any tension or stress that your cat may feel. Mainly the established cat, I would think it's no fragrance, no odor, no scent. We can't tell that that they're plugged in at all. But for cats, these pheromone plugins release something into the air that is supposed to mimic the chemicals from a cat's mother when they're nursing. Apparently, they're very, very helpful if your cat is uh, aggressive or in cases of multiple cats, they're even good at calming cats down to where they don't fight if they're susceptible to not getting along. So I think it's a good idea to have some plugged in and ready to go when you're in this visual contact phase and to kind of keep them around the house and keep them plugged in for a good three months, which I think most of them come with like a three month uh, fill pack anyway, because they run out after a month. So that's what I did. Honestly, I'm not too sure what it contributed, but it definitely couldn't hurt as a potential buffer in order to help the process. So then as you can see in this clip, I decided to extend the gate out, basically giving Alfred a little bit more space to explore and maybe a little bit more confidence and familiarity when it came to the house before going into phase three. So this leads us to phase three three, which I call the play and interaction phase. In order to do this best, it really is helpful to have two people, but you are also going to need some good kind of teaser toys. So that could be the ribbon. You might also want to have some kitty snacks on hand. But the goal of this phase is to remove that boundary, which in this case is the baby gate, to where both cats are in free range of each other, but not in a pressured kind of way. By the way, the biggest mistake you can ever make is to bring a new cat to the house and then just throw both cats open in a room together and say, they'll figure it out uh, because they probably won't. And then you are going to have a very long time, if not indefinite lifetime of both cats being pretty aggressive towards each other. But I digress. So for phase three, one person is going to want to be playing with or basically distracting the new cat while another person is going to want to be playing with and distracting the established cat. And the gate is removed so they don't have that boundary, like I said. And this is a way for them to kind of get even closer to each other without this designated pressure of having to focus on each other. You can see that uh, Alfred is being distracted in the other room and Puppy, the focused stoic boy he is, is focused on Alfred, but we're doing, you know, the best as possible to kind of get him more lighthearted, more playful. Again, puppy is very food driven. So some treats were helpful during this process. And you can see there's no real aggression being displayed. Puppy isn't an aggressive cat in general. He's, he's a pretty lovey boy, but there was more curiosity, if anything, kind of just trying to figure out who this new guy is. Meanwhile, Alfred, as many of you guys might know at this point, you know, he's got a little derpy touch to himself. Like he's, he's kind of, he, he couldn't care less what's happening if he's even aware of what's happening. So if a toy is flapping in front of his face, he is going to be very easily distracted by it. So this went pretty well. And we knew that this 
first interaction of phase three was good to go when after some innocent sniffing, which you will also see happening, a puppy let out a little hiss and then ran out to his catio. And so that's when we knew, okay, let's back it up and let's just put Alfred back in this extended gated off part of the house and allow puppy to kind of cool off for a second, which he did. He was right back inside maybe just a couple minutes later. And this is why it's so important to not force them, not feel pressured, because even though you might be discouraged if the little hiss comes through and you might think it's a a signal for something bigger and, and perhaps you went too fast or, you know, did something wrong, just relax and be assured that this is just a part of the process. You will notice that as time goes on, whether it's a few hours, whether it's a few days or a week or so, they'll both relax again. The hissing, if that happens, will become less frequent. Mainly your established cat won't be on high alert. You'll see relaxed body language. And in a way, what you're trying to avoid here and what we didn't have happen at all, if you haven't noticed, is any kind of actual fighting. So any kind of cat fight. And I'm pretty confident if you go through these phases as they're listed, especially if you don't have an aggressive established cat in the first place, you will not experience any kind of swatting or violent aggressive cat fighting. And by the way, if you're not sure how to gauge whether your cats are playing or fighting, I did recently make a video on this and how to tell, which I will link in the description below as well. So once you feel confident in phase three and that your cats can cohabitate well together, or at least without that boundary or gate between them, that takes us to phase four, which is the final phase which is kind of progressive because it's an indefinite phase. And that is the phase of cohabitation. Puppy and Alfred reached this phase, so no gate being up and them both having free range of the house with each other. And I kept like a hawk eye on them to make sure that everything was peaceful and just kind of watch them feel out their flow with each other. And they were still super curious about each other. Puppy was semi-skeptical but then you could slowly tell that he was curious about Alfred, but he wanted to kind of incorporate some kind of interaction with him. Alfred is definitely just, his temperament in general is kind of aloof. He's very playful, but unsurprisingly, Alfred was more kind of into an exploration mindset. He was sniffing around the house, sniffing around the catio, kind of finding his favorite nap spots. And you guys, I was so excited uh, when they were simply in the same room together, even just laying across the room from each other. And especially when you could tell that they were both relaxed. Puppy had his back to Alfred. He was in a vulnerable position. He was not on high alert. And one of them would nap on one side of me on the couch and the other would be on the other side. And this was just after a week. So I felt it just warmed my heart so much. I felt so, so happy at two weeks max from when I brought Alfred home. They were playing together, chasing each other around the house, and it was just like the best feeling. There were no fights. Maybe once every couple of days, I would hear puppy let out a little hiss, and that's just because he was getting used to Alfred's energy because Alfred always wanted to play. And I think if any of you guys were to introduce a new kitty feline sibling to your solo kitty, which I highly, highly suggest you do because it's totally worth it, then you should definitely go about it this way and you will be so happy with the success and closeness that your kitty siblings gain from doing so. Just a few tips for you guys. Remember that you can always backtrack. And even if you already have two cats that maybe don't get along, that have both been in the house for a few months or even a couple of years, you can try starting from phase one of this to reintroduce them. And a lot of people have seen success doing things like this. And also, please remember that there is no time limit. Just go along with your cat's body language and behavior and observing, engaging, especially your established cat. And that's when you decide to move forward with the phase. And if it doesn't go so well, just move back, put that gate back up, lower that sheet again, whatever you have to do. And just a little side note, even though I have other videos about this, make sure that you always have one kitty litter per cat 
plus an additional one. So if you have two cats, that's going to be three litter boxes. If you have three cats, that's going to be four litter boxes. If you have one cat, that should be two litter boxes. Having that set up properly as well as making sure to separate their feeding areas is going to help you a lot when it comes to any potential kind of primal conflict, especially with the feeding and meal times. And finally, please remember, do not force this process. Do not force any time limits on the phases. Be patient with it. It might take your cats a few days like it took Puppy and Alfred before they're actually cohabitating with no boundaries in the house. It might take them a few weeks, but you want to make sure that you establish things properly for the long run. So be patient with yourself. All right, guys, I hope you found this video interesting or helpful. I'm so happy and excited to bring you all of this upcoming content here in 2020. And before I forget, haven't done the meow out of the week in a hot minute. So the meow out of the week this week goes to two people. And those two people are Johnson Ave and Steph. Thank you guys so much for always being so supportive and leaving such kind and awesome comments on especially the video that you did most recently, which was the most recent video of Puppy and Alfred in one of their play battles. I appreciate you so, so much, as do the boys. And for anybody else, if you would like to potentially be the meowed out of the week in next week's video, then all you have to do is click the thumbs up to like this video and leave a comment below telling me your favorite part about it. Of course, it also helps me out and helps the channel out a lot if you click the thumbs up below, regardless if you found this video interesting or helpful, or if you have been successful or maybe not successful in introducing your cats. I would love to hear about it and keep the conversation going. So just leave me a comment below. All that being said, as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.